Okay, hi. Um, so I'm Laura, and I'm a postdoc with Dove Sachs. And when I think about this topic of agility and possible futures in a warming world, I think about species and how they will respond to a warming world. And as a biogeographer, we tend to think about species geographic ranges and how they're distributed in the landscape and how those distributions might shift with changes in climate. So if you take this armadillo, we know it's global range, we know it likes warm conditions, and if you want to predict where else is going to go in the US, we can, ha we can know that it will likely not go past Rhode Island because then it'll be too cold for that species to survive. So these kinds of methods are useful to determine species risks of extinction, invasions, and changes in richness and composition. So when we think about species climatic tolerances, we often describe that as the species ecological niche, where all the climate that is known to be suitable for the species would be described in this sort of a blue blob. So here's temperature and precipitation. Any region that has that climate would be deemed region where you would expect the species to be found. Any region that has climate that is not inside the species ecological niche would be regions where you would not expect the species to be found. What does that look like with real data? Here is Pinus ponderosa. This is their geographic range based on observation data. And if you plot that into a temperature precipitation axis, here in blue you have all the grid cells where the species is found. And if you draw a polygon around it, then everything inside that polygon would be the species ecological niche. Everything outside that polygon would be climate that's available, regions that are available, but have climate that is unsuitable for the species. So these ecological niche models are very common approaches, but they have this major assumption that the occurrence data that we have is filling the species niche completely. But most cases, and what we've seen with the Pinus ponderosa that I just showed, often the data is sparsely distributed within that species realized niche, within the species ecological niche. You can ignore the realized bit. Um, so there are por portions of this niche that we think it's suitable, but for a number of different reasons, we don't have observations for the species there. So what that means? That means that if we have species A, then we can be very confident that we're doing a really good job at predicting that species' climatic tolerances and therefore maybe their range dynamics in response to a global, uh, global warming. But for species B, we will have less confidence in determining species responses. Um, so we were interested in developing a framework that will let us know if we have species A or species B in a standardized approach that we could apply to multiple species. So this is what we came up with. If you think of just drawing random samples within your data set, you would expect that as you increase the number of samples, you're going to increase the, the, um, the, the amount of area of niche space that you're describing with the data. But that relationship is not linear. So what you actually expect is that you'll have an exponential increase, but then at some point, because the climatic boundaries are fully captured by the data, any additional data is only going to fill in that space rather than expanding that space. But species are going to plateau at different points. So you would expect species A to plateau earlier than species B. You would need less data to have to describe the climatic boundary of that species. So, and then we think that if we use that that point of plateau as, a, as the measure of confidence, then you could say, well, if species plateaus earlier, then we're more confident about that species niche prediction, and species B plateaus later, therefore we're less confident about that species prediction. This is real data for Pinus ponderosa that I showed initially. This is the species response curve. Here is the proportion of total number of occurrences and the proportion of the niche described by those occurrences. And as you can see, um, you, f you find that if we're interested in reaching a certain threshold, say 80% of the niche described, for this species you'll need around 60% of the data. But this threshold is not the same for every single species. So here you have Pinus contorta, it also has a thousand records similar to Pinus ponderosa, but a very different point where the number of occurrences is going to meet the threshold that we're interested in. And here you have two species, also pine trees, that have only 500 occurrences, and yet this species, for example, 
performs a lot better. You only need 20% of the data to get a good prediction of that species niche in comparison to Planus ponderosa where you need a lot more data. So confidence is species specific and is independent of total number of occurrences. Um, that was really quick. So um, just to conclude, if we want to know how species respond to climate, we have niche models that can help us answer this question, but we need to take into consideration our degree of confidence in making those predictions. So we argue that accounting for confidence is going to help us contextualize our predictions and better predict how species' ability to a warming world. Thank you.